He is Jalen Anthony Rose. What up, though? I'm David Jacoby. And on the cool check-in. Together, we are Jalen and Jacoby. What is we it that we do? We give people. Yes. They won. Great to have you back in studio in New York City in advance of the NBA draft Thursday night on mm-hmm. ABC. We have a draft prospect joining us in the program later. Later, Stay tuned for that. But Jalen, we start with your favorite quarterback in the NFL, Lamar Jackson. The latest news is he has an inconclusive test that may cause him to miss some practices. But more importantly, he talked about his team's Super Bowl aspirations and his jersey number. Let's listen to your favorite quarterback in the NFL, Lamar Jackson. We win the Super Bowl, I'm, I'm going to number one. That was my first number ever. My dad told me, number one, get number one because that's the best. Like, you the best. And it always stuck with me. I want to retire number eight and number one. I want to do that here at the Ravens. So I want to win the Super Bowl with number eight on, do as much as I can with number eight on, then come back and do the same thing with one on. Mm-hmm. He wants to wear number one, Jalen. I did it. I don't consider them the number one favored team to come out of the AFC, but to me, they're the number one threat to the Chiefs. Do you agree with that? He on his Frank Sinatra trying to do it his way, right? How about this, though? We saw Kobe Bryant have two numbers, mm-hmm. get hung in the rafters, the late great, by the Los Angeles Lakers. Lamar Jackson, I'm glad he's going to not only do it his way, but now they got weapons around him, David Jacoby. Yeah, they do. And so now they're going to have a terrific run game, and he's going to show the league with more weapons on the outside that Lamar could be a sniper. So, yes, of course, you got to pay attention to Patrick Mahomes. And I know you love Bills Mafia. I get it. The Cleveland Browns are improved, and Julio is with the Titans now. I get it. But Lamar's my guy, and you know how this works. I know. When you mention the weapons, when you look at what they have at the skill position, something that they've always been criticized for not having enough around Lamar Jackson, you bring in Sammy Watkins. You bring in the other players. Like, they do need to keep him healthy, but Dobbins, Andrews, Hollywood Brown, Rashad Bateman they just drafted. Like, this is a revamped offense. Will we see him do it through the air and the ground the same way we saw him do it as MVP? Jalen and Jacoby fame. Rashad Bateman, by the way, out of Minnesota. Mark Andrews has been an elite tight end, basically used as a wide receiver. Now you have actual receivers. Holly Brown, Hollywood Brown, got to have a breakout year. Mm -hmm. You got to have a breakout year. Sammy Watkins, got to keep him healthy because I ain't worried about Lamar. That's the thing. Everyone talks about Lamar needs to pass more from the pocket. Lamar needs to improve his passing. You know what he doesn't need to improve? Running. The last two MVPs of the NFL are Lamar Jackson and Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. Those are the last two regular season MVPs. Did I miss something? No. I saw Patrick Mahomes get his Super Bowl. I saw Tom Brady get his Super Bowl and win finals and and Super Bowl MVP. I get it. But Lamar is still that deal. He's going to do work this year. I love the Ravens this year. He seems to be a quarterback who is the franchise quarterback of the future for the Ravens. However, dual threat. When you look at the Bay Area in the San Francisco 49ers, Bay Area! you have to wonder if Jimmy Garoppolo is the franchise quarterback <laughs> moving forward. The latest is Kyle Shanahan said that Jimmy Garoppolo is our number one quarterback. Trey Lance is our backup at number two. Jalen, how long do you think that will be the case in the Bay? I think that'll be the case until... Trey's ready to go. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. You know how this works. You take a quarterback not only in the first round, but you take them that high, and their styles of play are actually vastly different because Trey is going to be a dual threat, and Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be a pocket quarterback. But you know who I got to ask? The goon with the spoon, E-40. I got to ask him what he thinks because you know where I'm going to be week one when the 49ers start the NFL season? In attendance. <laughs> in attendance. I want in you in the attendance. Suit. I want you in the I'll be suit. in the bay at the game because we gonna win week one. Okay. <laughs> Why well, was all funny games until I said that? I'm not addressing that. I'm not addressing that. <laughs> Whenever I think about Jimmy Garoppolo, I think about the quarterback that brought them to the Super Bowl, the quarterback that had the ball in his hands <laughs> at the end of the game. That's the all he had to do was complete one deep ball and could not do it. Now, Jalen, if you look at what happened since then, since this fourth quarter drive, 
that didn't work out. Mm. They've been trying to get off him when Russell Wilson was <laughs> supposed to be available, when Iron Rodgers was supposed to be available. They get Trey Lance in the draft. It seemed like ever since this drive, they've been trying to get off Jimmy G. Somebody tells me he does not finish the season as a starter, even though he starts it as a starter. I agree with you. That's a terrific assessment. And that's okay, by the way. He's still showing that he could be a starting quarterback somewhere else if he's not there in the NFL. He's just not a dual threat to me. And you mentioned the key point. He had his one shining moment. He missed the throw. He did. And, 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 right? He missed the throw. And you know Shanahan is really good friends with our guy with the Rams. McVay. And you saw what McVay did, right, with Jared Goff. It was all good just a week ago. He got off him. Somebody, somebody tells me the same thing will happen in the Bay Area. Jim, we have some huge news out of Tokyo. The GOAT, the undisputed GOAT of women's gymnastics, Simone Biles, has withdrawn from the individual all-around competition, not from the Olympics itself, but from the all-around competition to focus on her mental health. What do you think about this decision from Ms. Biles? Here's what I want people to think first and foremost about the courage of this terrifically talented young woman. She was also one of the victims during the Larry Nasser years. Mm -hmm. It's a great point. Right? So she's still competing in that environment where that abuse took place and accomplishing everything you just said and doing it as a young woman. Okay? Like, you're required to behave like a professional and move like an adult, and now you have a staff, and now you have a financial advisor, and you have a team of people that need to help you get to where your goals um, have accomplished. But she's still a young person. And she competes in multiple events also. And you told me earlier, like, I know that that's not norm. I know that that's the norm in a lot of ways for her to compete in four events, being so very talented the way she is. But imagine just having to be perfect at four different exercises, though. See, I can miss a shot in basketball or have a turnover. In football, you could get a penalty. And we were all sitting there, and I was like, man, I ain't got a cut. Y'all heard me say it, in the, in the, in, can't get a cut every day. You remember I said that? Mm -hmm. I was sitting there thinking, man, I'm broke. My skin is bad. My teeth is bad. I'm about to be on CBS. People going to see this, right? And so now for her to be as vulnerable as she is for other people to learn from, it's refreshing. I support her. We support her. And I hope she still finds the strength to get back out there and compete in this year's Olympics. She also mentioned the unique conditions under which these Olympic Games are being played with the testing and without the crowd mm. and being sequestered and like mm. not having the freedom to sort of go about the city during off days and things yeah, like that. Man. Like you, that just adds to the pressure, adds to the stress. And, and we put such huge expectations upon her to deliver another five gold medals. Again, like deliver another five gold medals. Say that again. Say that with your chest. To deliver another five gold How medals. How many gold medals do KD and Dame have to deliver this year? Zero. You see what I'm saying? Zero. And, 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 and if they do bring the one home, it's going to be a great and feat. Mental She's, health, just like physical health, correct. I really hope that she is able to compete in the individual events and perhaps we can end this story with a little bit of gold at the end. Or perhaps not. We wish her the best. Absolutely, we do. Jalen. What up, though? When we come back, we're going to be joined by Jason Preston, one of the most explosive players on the floor with one of the best stories off the floor. Jason Preston joins us right after this. You are watching Jalen and Jacob. Lottery pick right there. It's just about going out there and making the most of it. Every year I watch the draft and seeing the number one guy go by, I wanted to be in that person's shoes. I put a bird, put a bird, put a bird. Oh my goodness! Oh, that pretty! Coming to you live on Pier 17, the Seaport District of Manhattan, brought to you by Chase. Welcome back to Jalen Jacoby. Jalen, who joins us right now on the program? A terrific prospect, a better young man who's going to make a name for himself in the NBA just like he did in this year's NCAA tournament. Please welcome Jason Preston to Jalen and Jacoby. I appreciate you guys having me, man. It means a lot. Thank you. 
Oh, thank you so much for taking the time. Right here, Jalen Jacoby, we've been big fans of yours, tracking you for a while. You've had a very interesting journey from high school to prep to Ohio U. Explain to the people that aren't familiar sort of what that that process was like for you to get to this spot ready for the draft. The whole, you want the whole thing? Absolutely. Yeah. Your entire journey, no doubt about it. The ups, okay. the downs, your journey, my brother. I got you, I got you. I, I know got you've you, overcome so. a lot. I know you've overcome a lot, and I know how mu much this means to you. So please let yes, the sir. world know your journey and how you've overcome. Yes, sir. So, you know, I started playing basketball when I was four years old. Uh, I was always playing, playing around the house. Uh, my mom was also, you know, a big basketball junkie. She, uh, she was one of the only one of her family members to move from Jamaica to the States. So I grew up in Orlando, Florida. Um, like I said, I was always playing basketball, local rec centers, parks, my house, like whenever I could, I was playing. And like I said, forward to all the way up to high school, you know, I was always playing basketball whenever. And, you know, freshman, freshman year, sophomore year in high school, you know, I played on JV, had a uh, pretty good, pretty good seasons there at JV. And then Things, you know, started to really change my junior year. Uh, right before the start of that, my mother sadly passed away from lung cancer. Um, there was a little falling out between, you know, her, my, my side of the family and my stepdad. So lost that relationship a little bit. Um, and my cousin, my mom's sister's son moved down from Jamaica to, you know, come live with me in Orlando. And I lived also with two other family friends to finish my, uh, high school career and you know it was, it was it was tough at first but you know i had a great support system and everybody who was in jamaica with my aunt uncle cousins and then uh obviously people who were living with me as well uh, justin morgan brian whitaker and russell whitaker you know they were just very helpful for me at the time and I'm very thankful for them um but you know in terms of like basketball at that time not really playing a whole lot uh, varsity, you know, uh, I, I was really small and on my JV years in, in high school, I was really just a shooter because like I said, I was really small, I was coming off pin downs and, you know, I really tried to, you know, I guess add more things to my game, but, you know, it didn't really, I guess, work out too much for me. And, you know, people were telling me that I should, you know, do other, do other things, you know, have a backup plan besides playing basketball. And, I just really, really love basketball, so I want to do something else involved with it. So, you know, I, I uh, wrote about basketball. I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Fan Sided, the app. Mm -hmm. um, of course. I, what's it called? And I, Jay, I know you're a big Detroit Pistons fan. I, uh, Detroit I, basketball! <laughs> and Tayshawn Prince is my guy, too. Tell him the story about that as well. He's a journalist. No, for sure. I, I love Tayshawn. Um, you know, being skinny players, you know, I just, I, <laughs> I loved watching him growing up, but. I, I, if I couldn't play basketball, I wanted to stay. I wanted to stay within the game, so I figured I'd write about it. And I wrote a couple articles on fan sites about the Pistons, and I could voice my opinion on them. And it was something I really liked. I actually had a couple articles that go on Bleach Report, so that was something I was going to do. You know, like I said, through my high school career, I, I wasn't playing at all, wasn't doing anything, so I was committed to that. Um, I was going to go to U University of Central Florida, which is like ten minutes away from my house. I graduated high school. I was already um, majored in journalism over there. I was taking summer classes. And then one day, uh, one of my friends asked to go play in an AU tournament. And I'm like, sure. He like, me as a fifth player. And he's like, sure, that'd be awesome. I get to play 40 minutes and stuff. It sounds fun. So tournament plays out and I played really, really well. Like, played really well. We probably beat some teams we probably shouldn't have. Um, and it, it was a really good two tournaments because it was one tournament after the other. You know, I had some like D2s reaching out to me and some low D1s. In fact, I was this close to going to a D2 in Lincoln Memorial, but a lot of them were talking about redshirt this year and possibly getting on a scholarship next year. Cause you know, at this point it's like late July, like the fall semester is about to start in like two weeks. So not even have a lot of scholarships at this point to offer. And a guy recommended that I go prep school, basically like a fifth year of high school. I ended up following him there and you know, it, it was that was a crazy time in itself. You know, there were about seventy kids there, five different teams. And turn, I've come to find out that's not like most prep schools, but 
I ended up bouncing around from team to team. At the end of the year, I, I eventually made, my, made it on uh, the top team. And as that year finished, I realized I didn't have any film of myself. So I decided to, you know, ask for the team iPad on one of our road trips back from a tournament. And I started screen recording all these clips of myself. And then I sent it over to one of my friends and he puts it all together, makes a little two, three mix, of, two, three minute mix for me. Wow. Um, the, Believe, the Believe Twitter page then posts it. And then I get DMs from Ohio and Longwood, and I end up taking visits to both. Got offers from wow, both, and I ended up choosing Ohio. That's crazy. The Believe page, shout to them as well. Shout to Rob and Troy, who got a podcast on that. So you go to Ohio University, and you ball out in the NCAA tournament. What was that experience like for you? No, it was amazing because, you know, coming there my freshman year, we were second to last in the MAC, and... Me and one of my, my teammates who I had to my final year at Ohio, Ben Vanderplas, that was something we'd always talk about, you know, just building the program, getting it where it needs to be, you know, back to where it used to be at a Sweet 16 team. And, you know, we were really big on that. So, you know, to fast forward to junior year and us to, for Ohio to get the rec national recognition, you know, the school deserves, you know, it's really, really humbling and awesome. Well, you, uh, you're now obviously eligible for the draft, and there's some some people have you going late first round, mid first round, maybe second they round. Are. What teams have you Buckets. been working out for? What teams have shown interest in you? Um, I worked out with 16 teams during this process. Mm. Um, it was it was a long it was a long process, and I went to a lot of different cities. It was definitely a dream come true, just seeing uh, the amount of cities I have and. Going that far out west, like I've never been farther than Ohio, so it was it was it was an unbelievable experience. Well, well deserved. Looking forward to watching you get drafted, doing work in the league, and eventually having your own show like this one. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you joining us. Best of luck. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Thank you guys for having me. We'll be back right after this very short break. You're watching. To Jalen and Jacoby, want to thank Jason Preston for coming through. Jalen Rose, yesterday I told you I have no concern about Team USA. They're going to win out. They're going to win the gold. Man, one of us is so confident. They went up against Iran. Not, not the toughest opponent in Tokyo. However, they blew them out. Blew them out, Jalen Rose. It was great to see them ball and get their confidence. Dame had a big first half. But I got to ask you a question. Go How ahead. many NBA players on our Ryan's team? Zero. Absolutely oh, zero. Not oh, even okay, one. Okay. Not even okay, close. okay, okay. Not even former NBA okay, players. Okay, I'm just saying. I want them to win the gold, too, fam. They're win the saying. gold. Just remember, I said it. Team USA, okay. I never criticized right. you. I never doubted you. I never backed out on you. We're going for gold. We're winning gold. That's one of us. We are you winning show gold. Me. We are winning gold in Tokyo. <laughs> I promise you. Jalen Rose, it is now time for... One of our signature segments, it is time for Soft Move or Boss Move. Jalen, one of my favorite rappers, Ricky Rose, Rick Rose. Rose! He's the boss. He recently posted on Instagram that he owns a hundred cars. A hundred cars. Look, this is just, that's just 10% of his car. Right there. No loners. He owns them all outright. How about I met Rose like 15 years ago at the cookout movie with Queen Latifah in common? He and said, now to see him living like that, it just makes me so He very owns a hundred cars and does not have a driver's license. Soft move or boss move? Rose! Cars and not having a driver's license. He's the license. biggest boss thus far. Boss move. You already know what it is. You know why he don't need a license? Because he can have himself chauffeured, dog. Get up on game. So that's what I'm wondering. Does he just get driven around <laughs> everywhere? Because here's my problem with that is all those are old cars. Those back seats are not as comfortable as some of the new sedans. Have so if you're getting driven, do you sit in the passenger seat? Have you ever seen the boss Ricky Rose without a glass of champagne at least he's in his hand? He's not a small man. He's not a small man. I know he's not sitting in those back seats of those 1950s cars. I know that's not happening. I think he's driving them regardless. He's driving without a license. That's what he's oh, doing. Oh, he's been driving without a license. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Oh, yeah. He's driving without a license. Oh, he's driving without a license. And he gets pulled over. He's just like, I'm Rick Ross. <laughs> 
I don't need a license. It's paid for. Yeah, yeah. Rick Ross. <laughs> it's registered. It is registered and it is paid for. <laughs> Make sure that you listen and follow and subscribe to the Jalen and Jacoby podcast. We always have exclusive content on our podcast. Today we have NBA draft prospect Jason. I'll be to the soon. I'll be to the, the crib soon, Rose. 